Well, we're standing in front of the final church that was constructed at the mission of Tumacacari in the northern end of the Pimaria Alta in northern Sonora, what was northern Sonora and what is today southern Arizona. This mission was one of the last established along the road to what is today Tucson, and it is an important site in as much as it represents a typical example of a mission community in the late 18th century. Now, the whole Santa Cruz River stretching from the border to almost up where the modern junction of the Gila and uh, Colorado rivers are, are today um, was an area which was developed largely as a result of the efforts of missionaries who started coming here in the late 17th century in the 1690s, and these included Eusebio Quino, a number of his companions, Augustin Campos, and through their explorations and discoveries, they established a large Indian population here that could be persuaded to essentially adopt a Christian way of life and to become vassals of the Spanish Empire. So both the mission of Tumacacri and Tuvac play different parts in the story of Spanish colonization in this region. This trail is about movement and connections. Even the buildings we see have long associations to the culture and construction techniques of the old world. The way of putting adobe bricks together, of using arches, of connecting the walls and the roofs, were adaptions of Roman building techniques from millennia before. There are examples of borrowings here from one place to another, from one culture to another, and from times long ago joined to the present. The church connected people to their society, gave them markers to travel through life, a way to move through time from birth to death with meaning and with understanding. The churches and those who lived and died in and around them have left their markers for us along the trail as we move through our lives. There were people here, people who lived and loved and laughed, moved through their lives and left sons and daughters to continue that unbroken journey from the past to the future. Well, we're at the trailhead in Tumacacri that leads to Tubac. Uh, this section of the Anza National Trail is just one part of a very much longer, larger system of trails that stretch all the way from Hermosillo in Sonora up to San Francisco in what was then Alta California and what is today the state of California. This trail system actually is much older than Anza's famous explorations from the mid-1770s. Sections of it were undoubtedly used by Native Americans perhaps as many as 12,000 years ago. Um, the trail probably was extensively used also by the Hohokam Indians that lived in southern Arizona during the period from about 500 BC up to about 1500 AD. So it's a very old trail. As you proceed along this trail, you pass through an area that was once undoubtedly part of the uh, farmlands of the mission of Tumacacri. As you go further north, you'll see a whole series of uh, sections of the Santa Cruz River where there's very abundant water. And you'll also get a chance to walk along where the Anza expedition had actually passed. The entire area is one that's very rich in history. Virtually everyone that was of any importance in the history of the Southwest before 1900 moved along this trail system. Then, of course, long after the Anza expedition, this was the Camino Real, the, the royal roadway that ultimately connected Tucson with central Mexico and finally connected Tucson on to Yuma and Alta California. So it's a very important crossroads in that sense. We'd been traveling along this route 1780s or 1790s, it was not unusual to find uh, particularly uh, the bodies of Apaches and, and Hispanic settlers who died in the Indian Wars. There are many references at both Tumacacri and at Tubac. The people actually fell out here. So in addition to being a historic trail, this is also a kind of battleground. Um, most of the transport that went on this trail before 1850 was done so either on foot or on horseback or with mules. This wasn't really a road in the sense of uh, it having wheeled traffic or vehicular traffic as we think of today. 
And of course, ironically, it parallels the current interstate, which is the shows the wisdom of the construction of this particular trail, and that it's still the most practical route from getting from Nogales to Tucson. Being part of our society is to be within a process of learning how we communicate, how we interrelate, how we work and play. What we respect and what we come to learn is important. What we learn about our histories and how the present has been shaped from the past is that we, as individuals, are that connection from the past to the future. Who we have been and what we have done is part of that movement, that recreation, that connection through time. Who we are and what we become is a continuation really, a reenactment of something deep and something very old. We carry this legacy along and we express it in our own unique way through our lives. We celebrate what's gone before and we find in this reenactment meaning and the deep bond of that connection to those who have preceded us. Changes of seasons as we move along the trail and our own changes the same sky and river, the age-old rocks, and the breathing of wind through the trees. We are a living part of that. We are, each of us, a witness to that continuation. Well, we're standing at Clark's Crossing, which is on the second half of the Anza Trail between Tumacacori and Tubac. Um, amidst a lot of old cottonwood trees and a section of the river which is very much as it was in the 18th century. If you've been standing here, say, in the 1770s, you would have quite often seen travelers on mules and, and donkeys coming through this area, and occasionally even uh, uh, they had two-horse sort of litters that they would carry people in. Um, through this entire segment of the trail, this is uh, most of the trail up to this point is down in the, the river bottom and you cross the river several times in places like this. At this point at Clark's Crossing, you actually climb up onto an escarpment and will travel for about a half a mile into the edge of the old colonial town of Tubac. Um, much of the area beyond this point have some signs of having prehistoric use and it really points to the, well, the several thousands of years of use of, of the trail side. The, the trail, by the way, was never much more elegant than you see it here although we talk about it being a roadway sometimes. It was a fairly narrow affair. And crossings like this, which in Spanish are called vados, move around quite a bit in this valley. So the, the original river crossing in Anza's time might have been a few hundred feet away from here. As we approach Tubac, we walk past the remains of an adobe colonial era village. The rains have eroded most of the adobe walls back to the ground. And we can see traces of personal lives lived along the trail. Reminder of how quickly the remnants of the past can disappear. Well, we're standing now in a place that was a crossroads of the Spanish Empire in the late 18th century. Starting in about 1752, there were buildings all around me, and these represented the settlement of Tubac, which was a combined Spanish military base and uh, town. It's interesting to note that the people that lived here are in some ways remarkably like today's modern population of Arizona. You can, for instance, imagine walking into the settlement and seeing people who look pretty much like African Americans you might meet in Tucson today, or Latino people, and even occasionally an Asian might be found in a place like Tubac. This is because although we talk about the Spanish Empire and this being a Spanish settlement, the first European settlement in Arizona, in reality, the population was made up of a diverse array of races and cultures. Probably maybe as many as a third of the people that lived here in Tubac were of some African descent. Another third, probably predominantly Native American. And the remaining third, a, a grab bag of different kinds of Europeans and Asians. Uh, very few people themselves, Castilians, even those from Spain, great numbers of them coming from other provinces, Aragon, Catalonia, and in particular here in the northwestern part of New Spain, we see a large presence of Basques, which they called Viscayans. In fact, Juan Batista de Anzo, probably the most famous of all the commanders of this base, was uh, a Basque and didn't speak Spanish too well, according to some accounts of... Uh, based on his writings and, and descriptions. 
So it really was a very different kind of a place if we're thinking about comparing it to New England, to some place like Jamestown or, or Plymouth Plantation. All these people came here, they developed a society in which they could cooperate. And the society was one in which it ultimately succeeded in implanting a kind of European civilization here. As we, Hispanic, Native American, African American and Anglo, learn our identities and how to make it all work together, we see the legacy that we have been bequeathed to preserve the trail, its borders and boundaries, the life that abounds within it, and the memories of those who have gone before, to find our own purpose within the mosaic of our communities, to preserve and protect what has gone before, and to bring it forth into the future.